Alright, so I made this newer video, Tales of Terror from Reddit 3, because I'm jumping in on the Halloween trend by making scary stuff, like this one, by reading scary stories. Well, okay, you can watch it. Meeting the Parents Written by Previous Grocery 81 I haven't been alive in a while. Not that I'm dead per se. It's more of an internal death. When you can walk on air because air is more solid than it should be. I could walk in front of a car and it would drive right through me. I met my boyfriend's parents on the 8th of July, wet and windy sky. The clouds were shifting in and out of each other, slowed and patient, and the rain drummed against my forehead and rolled into my eyes. I didn't care for it, but my boyfriend held his umbrella over my head. I didn't have to suffer for too long. Once we were inside, I was hit by a strong aroma. It smelled thickly of spilt ink, and the smell only thickened with every breath. By the time I was halfway inside, the smell had already clogged my throat. I wheezed, inhaled into the kitchen where his parents drip from the walls. Their necks slithered out of their stomachs and their heads protrude from their necks. Hello, love. Cup of tea? One of them asked. I didn't know if it was mother or father, but its eyes were burrowing into me and I found myself nodding, even though I was more a coffee person. My boyfriend stared, confused, at the two leaking, shaking creatures, then, and then smiled. Molly, meet my parents. I found myself struggling to keep my eyes open, my heart in my throat. The more I looked at them, the more wrong it felt. The more I wanted to rip my eyeballs clear from their sockets, if it meant not having to see the poor beans anymore. Either the mother or the father had prepared a cup of tea and handed it over to me. I took it reluctantly and stared into the liquid inside. It was foaming, turning, and twisting over itself. The family was were glaring at me. My boyfriend's head was dripping unnaturally while the rest of him remained upright as his smile broadened. I put the cup to my lips and drank the tea down. It was both frozen and scalding, roasting and freezing, and breaking the inside of my throat. My body twisted in and out of itself, and I looked at my hands in horror as they melted and turned black as ink. My eyes rolled back into my head and I sank within the void of my own corrupted form. One year later, my boyfriend is bringing someone over to visit today. I can hear him walking her into the kitchen. My vision continues to glitch and my body throbs and twitches. The pain is unstoppable and possibly fierce. And yet I feel nothing all at once. 
I wonder if this is what death is like? Perhaps if it was, the dead would scream more than the living. Then are holding hands. It feels like sin. I stare at them with inky black hatred and my voice croaks out. Cup of tea, love? Humpty Dumpty, written by Elephant underscore one. Crystal found a letter on her desk at work. This is a wonderful surprise, she thought. I wonder who it's from. She opened and inside there was a sheet of paper. It read Ladybug. Ladybug fly away home. There is a fire in your house and your children are alone. It wasn't signed. It was probably just a stupid prank. But she had to check. How did they know her children were home alone? She called home waiting for an answer. She tried again and again but no luck. She called her neighbor who told her her the firefighters and medics were outside her home but it was too late simon saw a note on his car he looked around trying to figure out what rules he had broken that led to his ticket there was nothing on closer inspection it wasn't a ticket at all it was a rhyme That's odd, Simon pondered, for a minute, then thought of nothing of it until he got a call from his wife. She was sobbing, and he could hardly understand what she was saying, but he heard enough. Their baby was gone, hanged from a tree. By now, I knew about the nursery rhyme killer. Everyone did. It's all over the news. Countless incidents have occurred, and they're getting closer to where I live. I'm not worried, though. The killer has only targeted families, and I live alone. My parents are on the other side of the country. I took a shower and went back to my dorm. Written on the wall in dark red was a message. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty back together again. I knew they were far away, but I had to check my, on my parents. I went up to the roof to get reception and clear my head. The ringing was killing me. Pick up, pick up, I told, thought frantically. Suddenly, two strong hands pushed me over the edge. I make houses cheaper. Written by Short Story One. Houses are so expensive these days, and the generation of today cannot afford it, and are forced to live in flats. I remember how easy it used to be to buy a house and one day to eventually own it. This is the generation of rent. Well, I am sick of it. And I have successfully made nine houses exceptionally cheaper for someone from generation rent to buy on a mortgage and to eventually own. Let me give you an example of what I did by using my own house. The price listing on my house is literally half a million. But after I murdered the whole family, it reduced the house price significantly to below 100000 My house will never be the same. 
but someone from today's generation will have a chance at buying it now. This is what I did to make the other nine houses cheaper. I'm doing this for the young generation of today who are stuck in small, noisy, tight, and unaccommodating flats. No need to thank me. My father's license is to be dead is coming to an end. Written by Short Story One. My father died when I was 10 years old and he was just 30 years old. I remember on his open coffin bed, he had some sort of license resting on his body, which read, License to be dead for 10 years. Then, when everyone had a look at my father, his, while well, his coffin was open, he was finally buried. I'm turning 20 soon, and my mother has been ordering me to renew my father's license to be dead. With the help of my uncle, we dug up my father and opened up my father's coffin. He was just all bones now, and I wouldn't describe to you the other horrid details of death. I took the old license and with the new license, which also read license to be dead for another 10 years, I had to get his fingerprints or bone prints on it more or less. Just seeing my father, it kind of startled me for a moment and when the old license had just ran out, the bones of my father started to move. His skeleton head started to move and my uncle rushed in and grabbed a hold of my father's skeleton hands and printed them onto the new license. The bones stopped moving he was dead again. In another 10 years, I would have to do the same thing all over again. Protection Written by phone underscore user 1243 Mommy likes to protect me. She gave me a bandage after I accidentally got a paper cut. She also helped me get on my bike after I fell down. When I got into school, some kids didn't like me very much. I think his name was Brandon, and he hit me on my head. It hurt. A lot. My mommy came to pick me up after school. When I told her, she was furious. We got home and she sat me down in the living room. I don't know what happened, but mommy came back with a pipe drooling with red stuff. She says it is jam, but she said not to eat it. That's fair. Jam is supposed to be on bread always. I played with my dollies afterward. Mommy came into my room and bashed the pipe into me. I asked her to stop. It was hurting me. She didn't stop. She said it was to protect me from other people. She said it was the only way of keeping me safe from them. It's getting late. I think I should rest. I don't think I need protection anymore. As my bag is filling with many clothes, food, and water. Your parachute just failed. Now what? Written by Character Mood 4. Number 1. Don't look down. If you can't tell which way the ground is, close your eyes and relax. 
your body will naturally orient upwards. You won't die if you look down, but you m be terrified by what you see and have an adrenaline rush. You don't need adrenaline. You need it to focus. Number two, pull the three rings on the right side of the parachute to release the backup chute. It will not release. This is normal. Number three, Prepare for impact. Fields and trees are good places to land. Avoid water at all costs. Even if you don't die from the impact, the seaweed will pull you down under. Stay awake. You probably feel exhausted now that you hit the ground. It might have felt like a soft landing, but you are in shock. You will die if you fall asleep. If you stay alive long enough, you will start to hurt. That is a sign that you are coming out of shock and that you might survive. Ignore the pain. Number five, the people in the distance are not here to rescue you. You probably see people in the distance. When they start walking towards you, show no signs of life. They will tell you that they were sent to rescue you. Resist the urge to accept their help. From here, one of two things will happen. If they leave, go to six. If they pick you up and carry you off, go to 5A. 5A. Continue to show no signs of life. You must have moved a muscle. They will kill you if you try to escape. Now that you are in their grasp, you want to show them that you are not a threat. 5B. They will take you deep into the forest. Once they put you down, answer all of their questions falsely. These are the type of people you do not want to have your personal information. I hope you're a good liar. If they believe you, they will ask you for a gift. I recommend offering multiple non-vital organs. They will take them. Do not complain about the lack of sedation. If you told them the truth about who you are, they will come for more once you return home. Run off when they aren't looking. They won't chase you. They have already gotten what they wanted. If you run far enough in any direction, you will find society. Number six. Once the people leave, wait at least half an hour before moving again. Eventually, people who look the same as the ones who just left you will come. These are not the, the same people. You can go with them. They will lead you to safety. Raggedy Wolves Written by Nas Narif Listen at the window pane. The rattle at the latch. The ragged wolves are climbing up and digging in the thatch. Their eyes are blue and clever and their hands are small and pale. If you run, then they will catch you, try to hide, and you will fail. Tunnels between the rafters lead to ways beneath the floor. Raggedy wolves come knock knock knocking at your bedroom door. It doesn't have antlers. Written by Evan the Nerd 83. It ate. It ate and ate. Without stopping. Without mercy. All it could do was eat. And what did it eat? What else? Us. We had flocked to it. In our blind rush, our search for fresh air, 
re- we rang the dinner bell. We had been stuck inside for such a long time. Anyway, it followed our scent, the stench of fear of inadequacy. It could sense our presence before we even knew that it was there. No, we knew that it was there. We just didn't care. We thought we could handle it with our canned meats and trail mix, but nobody's ever really prepared for it. Nobody expects the hunger, the starvation, the desperation. We all end up eating. By God, we all end up eating. Colonialism is Universal Written by Evan the Nerd 83 They spoke through our televisions, our phones, screens were filled with static. We couldn't help but listen. What else could we have done? You're not civilized, they said. We are salvation. They rationalized. Do not resist, they commanded, and we obeyed. Again, what could we have done, given our technology at that time? Fought back? Things changed pretty quickly after that. Cities started to disappear. People were gathered, beamed onto ships, and carried to un fathomable shores. None of them ever came back. It was just as well. What happened here to those who tried to resist, it was a genocide. Plain and simple.